This is part two of my video on multi-threading in C++. Uh, we're just going to look now at threadlib.cpp. As you can see, this uh, holds all the main coding functions and structs that we need for the main file. Uh, we include threadlib.h here, which includes all the other header files, making it nice and easy. We just want to include for this one. It creates a namespace to avoid prevent any naming conflicts here with namespace.threadlib. Um, for Windows, it creates a global handle map. Uh, but it's not necessary for Linux, so we just carry on here. This is the dummy thread function that uh, we use to translate the function to whatever OS we are running. So here it uses the D word uh, and passes in the void uh, uh, void star and whatever data we're passing in. Uh, no D word needed for Linux. Um, here we convert the dummy data. Uh, we run the function. As you can see here, the function, and we pass the data in here and then we uh, delete the data to avoid any memory leaks. So it's pretty simple, nice and easy. Just moving on to the main class now. This program runs three threads and one of which manages the two child threads uh, and the two child threads just print out one letter each. So here we convert the data into a character that we're going to print out. Uh, this is going to do it print each character out 500 times. This bit is the critical section as you can see we have to lock it from all other threads when we enter. So here it'll go about uh, 50 letters then it's going to flush them out so we don't just wait for a while and uh, then it prints it all out. It's going to print it as it goes. After we're done with that we're just going to unlock it so that the other thread can use it. Oh, uh, A thing to mention here is that we have no control over when the thread is going to uh, use the critical section that is completely up to the OS. So that's just something to keep our minds on. Here's the main thread itself. Uh, threadlib creates two thread IDs uh, for thread A and for thread B. Thread A uh, creates it. Uh, it's going to run print thread, which is the one we talked about up there. Uh, it, take, it converts the character A to a void style, which we then pass in for printing. Uh, it does exactly the same for B. Uh, here we wait for each of the threads to finish and then uh, see in dot ignore and return zero. This just keeps the window up so we can see that it worked, uh, but we've all seen that before. So without further ado, let's see the magic. As you can see, it's printing out the characters, but it doesn't necessarily print it uh, in any specific order. The operating system decides when which threads get access to the critical section uh, on the fly. So there's no control for us over it. Um, that's all I wanted to show you. Just a few questions that I would like you guys to answer. Um, just what does inline do? Are there any other issues with debugging a multi-threaded system that I haven't mentioned? What could cause memory leaks when using a multi-threaded system? And when should you use the kill function to terminate a thread? I just ask that each person answer uh, only one question because uh, I saw someone answered all the questions last week that didn't give anyone else a chance so I was just hoping that we could give everyone a chance this week. Anyways I hope that helped and thanks for listening.